Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today, like it says in the title of the video and probably the thumbnail, I am going to be testing out some new brushes and probably from the thumbnail, you can probably tell what kind of brushes I'm testing out. And because of that, I did the sketches prior because I was just doodling Masaki for a little bit in kind of like cute, more winter, fall, cold um, season attire. And I just pulled some references from Pinterest and just doodled him in it. Um, and the reason why the lighting situation is a little weird, I never have my canvas usually set to white. I always have it set to some kind of like tan, light brown, light gray color. Um, one, because of this, and two, I, don't, I usually don't like using a white canvas. It's just easier for me to knock out values if I have a colored canvas. So, but for the purpose of today's video, I need to have a full range of values so it's easier for me to see starting from white going darker. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be doing line art today, uh, which I'm not totally stoked for, and you definitely don't have to, but I kind of left my sketches quite messy, so we're gonna do line art. I am gonna be using a brush um, that is on Procreate, and you can just change the streamline setting to fit um, your line art preferences. I did do a test, um, so if we go into my Wanu folder, check here, you can see that I kind of did a test and you can kind of get a sneak peek of the brushes. So you can see it's kind of like the screen tone pattern, these dots. Um, I did some tests. This appears blue, but it's actually gray. It's just because of my background color. But yeah, we're going to do some line art, which is going to look like this. Just ignore his lack of volume in his hair. Um, but yeah, going to do line art. Not going to be entirely stoked about it, but... Um, I thought I'd show you guys just the line art portion and me adding the values rather than showing the entire sketching process might take a little bit too long. But yeah, so the brush set that I am going to be using, as you saw, was going to be a screen tone set. And I'll make sure to link everything in the description as well as the channel and everything. So yeah. Okay, so the brush set that I downloaded is called Steph Tones, and I'll make sure to link it in the description as well as the video that you guys can watch um, where the artist and her boyfriend are talking about the brush set and stuff, and they're testing it out and like showing you guys what each brush does. You can hear a little bit more of the background information, and you guys are probably familiar with the artists that I'm talking about. So I'm talking about Doodle Date, and they're just a really wholesome, cute artist couple here on YouTube. I've been watching their stuff for so long, and I've always watched their live streams whenever I could catch them. So when I saw that um, Steph made some brushes, I had to try them out after seeing Adam try them, and. I've always wanted to do screen tones on Procreate, but looking at a lot of the brushes, you'll I'll, I'll explain why in a bit, um, and why some of the ones that I have tried in the past, I think I've deleted them at this point, and why I don't use them currently. There's some things I love from Steph's brushes that those other brushes didn't do, and I don't know how to correct them, so yeah. Um, these brushes are not free. You do have to pay for them, but I highly suggest that you definitely check it out check out the video, see if you like them, and if you're interested in using them, definitely go and support them. I think um, supporting artists in these little ways really help them, so yeah, definitely if you like them, go, you know, pay for them, download them, try them out, and give them a lot of love and support. So, um, so going into Procreate's brush library, there should be a section called inking yeah there should be a section called inking i was just wondering whether or not this was part of the set no so yeah as you can see i was actually using tinderbox for the line art but i didn't like the streamlining of tinderbox it has i think zero streamlining and for line art i tend to like having some kind of streamlining or stabilization just to get those cleaner lines so i can do a little bit of longer strokes um so i made another one for tinderbox and just up the streamline to around like 60, 61, and you can adjust it. So if you would like more streamlined, then you can do that. If you want less, you can do that. So you can see it kind of lags a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's start off with this. I am going to go full on black, which is also something I usually don't like doing, but let's start inking. And the reason why I don't have streamline set to max is because sometimes I like doing some shorter strokes, so. But I actually really like the texture of it. I think it looks really cool. And from far away, like it's not, it doesn't stand out that much. I'm gonna lower the lighting for you guys. 
think we all know how much I dislike inking. Okay, I shouldn't fill in his eyes that much. Um, Masaki's eyes are on the lighter side, kind of more mid-tone-ish, so it'd be easier for me to just fill that in with the screen tones. Now usually for like any kind of inking, I like something a little bit softer, but because I like the texture of this, we're just gonna keep it. So I'm just gonna thicken some lines where I kinda need to. <laughs> His eyes are so uneven. So I don't know if I wanna put a watch in. I got rid of my references. <laughs> so I'm trying to put some line weight variation some of these areas just because I feel like for like more of a actual manga inking style it's very common can't forget his mole I might add a little indication for the shadow but I love doing line art for hair usually. I've been doing a lot more inking um, traditionally because I've been using more markers and stuff and it just looks better if I do like black lines just because I love that contrast. Let me see if I have a good example to show you guys. Something like this. Right, so I've been doing a little bit more inking but this is like a little bit more, I don't know how you explain it, simple? Because I'm kind of just doing the lines of whatever the shapes are and just adding a little bit more values and like a little bit of line weight variation wherever I can. So every time there's like these little corners, I will darken them up usually. Kind of create that little line weight variation. It was like one of my favorite exercises when learning how to very up line weight and stuff we would have to draw our hands and you can see like these little crevices or like cracks or like little divots we would have to emphasize i don't know it was one of my favorites because i've always loved doing that anyways so it was quite a, a fun and freeing assignment back then So similar to how I draw Dogyam and June, Masaki kind of has a little like prominent lip. I also have this in real life as well. My mom likes to joke that if you have the like if your your lips come to a point more prominently, it means you like to talk. <laughs> I feel like I talk less. When I'm doing line art, this is full on concentration. Also, I think like if I was to ink more similarly, how do I ink like traditionally? Probably would have picked this like a thinner brush. floating by. I don't know if I want it in space as well. I guess it's too late. Now usually I add like little lines like this, but they kind of disrupt the little dot pattern, so I'm gonna leave it out right now. Okay, two more. So I made my canvas a little bit bigger than usual, so I could accommodate for the size of the screen tones. What an ugly finger. Don't want to make this finger too long because if it's bent, it should be a little bit shorter. I 
especially like for clothing. Clothing and hair I think is my favorite because like even if you do this it kind of changes it more even though I probably bump this up. Look like it's curving. I was gonna draw a Genshin character for this, but the amount of detail was gonna drive me up the wall, so I, <laughs> I decided against that for at least this time. <laughs> he looks more like Ming Hao. <laughs> oh no. It doesn't help that the hair length um, tends to be more mullet esque. He looks cute. Let's see this one. I decided to give him glasses. He does have glasses, but this is more like for fashion. <laughs> Asaki only wears glasses when he's at home, and I don't really do any illustrations of um, him when he's not in his usual attire or out and about. I remember seeing a comment like a while back Saying like, oh, she doesn't do line art because she doesn't know how to do it. I mean, like, it's partially right. It's more like I don't really like how I do line art. Ah, uh, hands. And gloves again. I didn't really think about this, but I think like Masakibi would be the type to wear gloves. Like, I feel like he would be the type to protect his hands a lot. I always think of like... How does this work? I feel like I have an easier time imagining folds when I'm painting it rather than doing it like this. Because now I'm very confused. <laughs> I was gonna give him like the similar blue light glasses that I have which are a little bit more like boxy because I have a more of a rounder base so I tend to wear square ones as recommended by a friend Daddy soda. Okay, so I think Masaki is all lined. I'm treating this kind of like a doodle page or a sketch page. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take a little break and I'll come back when we're going to start to do the actual screen tones. Okay, so type the sketch. I don't know what that second layer was. Um, make a new layer. So let's let's experiment on this guy. Um, so let's go back into step tones. So we have dots, which look like this, which I think might work best on this one because he's much larger than the rest. So we could definitely use this one. Um, we could do dark dots, which I really like for like darker hair. Masaki's hair is not that dark, but his clothing is going to be really dark. So we could definitely use that as well as dark diagonal is really cool. Like imagine doing like suits with this kind of like stripe pattern I think will look really nice but let me show you guys really quick on how you could do plaid with the stuff tone washi stripes so if you do this right you kind of get little lines if you tilt it just go over in there you got plaid <laughs> um, but the one thing I wanted to talk about what I really like about her brushes is that if you lay down your 
little swatch and you let go and maybe like oh no like i missed this area like i need to fill it in you can just go back in and just start filling it in because the pattern is i think it's like fixed to the canvas rather than on the brush so you don't get that weird overlap if you pick it up and move along but i, be I believe if you turn the canvas and you go over it then that's when you get to have that's actually a kind of a fun pattern but you can that's when you start to overlap everything is when you rotate the canvas zooming in doesn't really affect it but rotating does so yeah if you just keep that in mind um keep your canvas in one fixed position when working um and that's why i really like it for these because you can you can kind of just continue along because the grid one that you have in here where is it in is it in textures yeah grid if you put down a grid and then you let go and go again you can see it doubles up because i'm not realigning my brush correctly um i like it that the other one you can kind of just pick up and continue where you left off really nicely so um uh, i'm gonna actually use the dark dots i think for the majority of these i like the gray a lot i think this is a good kind of like mid-tone So you guys can see the dots kind of look like that. Color in his eyes. I'm just going to pick a round brush like my flat and use this to kind of erase anything that I don't need to have color. And you can see how that like the lines kind of interact with the dots. So if you use the paintbrush and you lightly go over your your area, you can imitate ever or not your kind of, um, what's it called? As if you were scraping at the page. I'll leave a video in the description as well as when I'm using normal screen tones, like actual physical screen tones. And you guys can see how I kind of scratch the surface to create highlights. Another way you could do this really simply is to actually block in all the shadows in one color, lock it, and then go over with a gigantic brush and fill it in. So for me, I think the dark one, let me read the brush name out, the dark, like step tone dark dots is the one I like to use the most. I think it adds value like the quickest, but you can definitely use other brushes to add values in a different way. I'm actually going to change mono line. I'm going to get rid of the streamline. It's kind of bothering me of how slow I have to go. I'm a little stubborn right now, so I'm not going to change it. But you can see you can kind of chip away to get the highlights. So these are the screen tones that I had. And because of my camera, you can't see the little dots. But you can see how you add the screen tones on top and you kind of like chip away they got the highlights and stuff and i think it looks really pretty so i definitely think screen tones is definitely fun to do whether or not it's traditional or digitally her pack is the layering one which i think looks really cool so if you layer one little section as you can see if you lift up your brush and go over it again it'll get darker is really nice because if you wanted to kind of like layer up like the brush says the step step tone layering brush you could definitely do that and kind of build up tone instead but because i'm working with just the flats um i'm just going to be using the dark dots for the majority of this i'm so used to like turning the canvas but for that consistency sake i'm not going to turn it Same thing. 
Then we're gonna use the monoline to chip in everything. I might switch the monoline. I might change it so that the tip of it will taper. You can just use any brush that has a taper to it. So this we can turn because I know how to add the tone back in if I need to. Like so, as long as you match up the angle of your canvas to the same orientation, you should be a-okay. Okay. His neck looks really long. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave it. So that's one. So let's do this one. I'm gonna use the lighter color for the puddles. So I think in his outfit, I think his kind of turquoise sweater will be this color and I'll make the brown a little bit darker. Because Masaki's outfit doesn't have too much contrast in terms of value-wise. Because I don't think his apron's much darker than his actual sweater. And then I'm going to race for these highlights, including his little keys on a string. I tend to make the eyes a little bit darker underneath if I can just because I usually add a little bit more pigment like reds to the eyes I just think it looks cuter I'm gonna leave that strand mostly this white so again I'm just erasing for the highlights These are really fun though. Um, to me it looks really satisfying. I fortunately can't show you guys what it looks like entirely because as far as I zoom out it just looks like solid grays to you. <laughs> I'm like not used to keep, like having to go into my palette every time to change the color. Okay, so for the fingers, I'm gonna do a bit of a softer edge because of his fingernails. I always have to keep looking in the webcam to see if it looks okay because the texture looks a little bit more overwhelming to me just because of how large it is but I can see kind of like a more less overwhelming version on the webcam program. <laughs> so his hoodie was supposed to be on the lighter side and then his sleeve is supposed to be dark. I don't even know if this is a hoodie. It's more like a jacket maybe. <laughs> For the lighting... Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of want the highlights just to be at the top of here. And then we'll make this a lot lighter. I might make this even darker as well. Then we'll make the inside of this one a lot darker. Not a lot darker, it's just like a smidge darker. <laughs> but we can add... Some darker tones into his hair. I don't know, I really like this one of Masaki. He looks really just it's cute. <laughs> For the shadows. We'll do the rest of the skin first. I didn't really plan out lighting for this one either, so maybe we should try doing this. Rowan Rembrandt's triangle. I'm gonna shade in the rest. Actually, I think we could probably get away shading all of this. 
bring in a little bit of indication of his glasses. So I'm kind of imagining the lighting this is really strong, so we can just add shadows to these. I want his gloves to be dark. these highlights I like rim lighting <laughs> once again I put the highlight of the eyes in the wrong spot but that's okay <laughs> I'm just gonna keep telling myself that Start to erase, get that lighting in. So because there's not really any of this really getting hit by the light, I'm going to add a little bit of deeper shadows so that it doesn't get entirely too monotoned. of a highlight and I think that's it so that is little like four different masukis I guess done with the Steftones brushes and I may say like I basically just used the one brush but I I do like the light one as well and the diagonal and the washi the washi stripes are very cute I definitely find more use for these for textures but I think it's fun to do kind of like the screen tone stuff um, for these kinds of like doodles or if you're doing like manga pages or something I think it actually works really well just vary up your tones and your values and then you're good to go um, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me work on these today uh, definitely check out doodle date and check out the brushes that Steph made I'll leave everything in the description so you can check it out and I'll talk to you guys next time with another video bye